My brother, oftentimes, you being attractive is about not doing dumb shit. In fact, most guys are more attractive than they realize. The problem is they end up talking to women out of liking them. In fact, the things are going well. He could even ask for a number, might even go on a date, and then he gets ghosted. And he's just like, I don't even understand what happened. He ended up talking her out of liking him. There was something that she liked about him in the beginning, and then all of a sudden, because the way that he was operating in his life or what he was saying, she was turned off by it and said, yeah, this ain't a good fit for me, or this guy's got some more maturing to do, or this guy doesn't have good social acumen, or whatever, the list goes on. And in this video, I'm gonna show you seven ways that you could potentially be destroying relationships even before they get started. My name is Ed Baxter, and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. I know you don't really have to say this, but poor grooming is all often the number one thing because it shows if you're put together or not. It signifies to her, do I and can I be intentional about how I am in my life? It also shows how much you are willing to unleash yourself, willing to really express yourself unapologetically. So if you're like dressing like everybody else and you're afraid to wear jewelry or get a tattoo or whatever it happens, maybe your style, your hair, the way you want to, and you're just cookie cutter like everybody else, this signifies to her that you are afraid. She doesn't want a guy who's afraid. She wants a guy who has a little bit of a wild savage in him that is unafraid and will do what he wants, why he wants to do it. And so if you're unkept, you don't even wash your hair, you don't comb your hair, or you just wear old clothes all the time, this shows her that you don't care about yourself. It also puts you down the social ladder. She doesn't want to be with a guy that she feels above. She wants to be with a guy that she feels a little bit below. Why? Because this means that it elevates her status. And if you can't demonstrate yourself that you're as high a status as possible in the way that you're dressed for your socioeconomic station, then you're really selling yourself short. Now you can be wild, you can be unkept, but it has to be a deliberate endeavor. You have to see, she has to see that this is something that you want to do, not something that you are unaware of. And you'll see this all the time. You can wear anything you want. You can dress however you want. You can do your hair, your beard, anything you want. It, but it has to be the way you want to do it. It has to be very deliberate. And you have to own that shit. Like, this is who the fuck I am. And you want to show this in a way that, like, takes a stand. You plant your flag. This is how I am. And so when you're doing it, even if you're wearing normal clothes, there should be some sort of an accent to it, some sort of accent pieces to say, yeah, this is how I am, and this is what I like. Most guys don't even think about the conversation of what they like when they wear. They just wear what they see other people wearing because most of the stores all carry a bunch of boring shit. Let's wear some khaki dockers pants and a red polo. Like, you can do that, but let's spice it up a little bit. Guys who tend to lose a lot in life tend to have a negative attitude, poor outlook in life. They tend to complain a lot. They tend to say stuff like, another dollar, another day, or living the dream. And nobody wants to hear that shit. Your boss doesn't want to hear it. Your coworkers don't want to hear it. And certainly a woman doesn't want to hear your negative attitude about everything in life. Does she really want to be with a guy who thinks everything is terrible? No, she's here to play. Make no mistake that the woman in your life is here to play. She wants to have fun with you. That's the whole point of the romantic relationship is to play. And Debbie Downer is not a playful guy. So when you're complaining to your wife, you're complaining to your friends, and you're being critical of all the negative shit in your life, just be sure that you're gonna scare every woman away within earshot before you even get a chance to talk to her. If you've seen anything about trying to attract women, you're gonna hear the one thing more than anything else. Seeking approval from a woman is always gonna kill her attraction for you. Being needy. And the thing is, is this puts her in the status where she's elevated above you. And she doesn't want this. She wants to be on equal footing. So when you see somebody and there's something you wanna get from them, realize you've created a vertical relationship with this person. You haven't created a partnership. When you approach somebody and they have something that you want, so you're gonna act a certain way to get that thing, you've entered, a you've entered a manipulative situation. And so the neediness is really just an act of manipulation. I have to be different to make this person like me. And so you put this mask on to be what you think she wants, but you don't know her. You don't, can't read her mind, so you don't know what she wants. And maybe you might get lucky and you'll put this mask on, it'll be what she wants, but then six months, a year down the road, she realizes you're not what the mask is and you wonder why you don't have compatibility anymore. And maybe she's doing the same thing. Maybe she's putting a mask on, trying to be her best self, be different than she actually is. And now you got two people who don't even fucking match and they wonder why it doesn't work. And so you trying to seek approval from a woman or your boss or your friends or anybody is going to ruin the relationship. And this is the problem with it. 
Because when you start talking to a woman, she starts seeing you do this needy behavior, this approval-seeking behavior, it's a massive turnoff. Because if you have to get approval from her, then that means she can manipulate you. And if she can manipulate you, even if she wouldn't, she sees you as weaker than her. The whole purpose of a woman being with a guy, she wants to be with a guy stronger than her, more dominant than her, more assertive than her. And so what ends up happening is, in contrast to her, you're weaker. And that's not going to work. She wants to rise up. She wants a guy who has higher status, higher strength, higher dominance, higher everything, if possible. And generally, there's a couple big ones that the woman's looking for, right? Taller than her, even physically, stronger than her physically. And so you doing this game of needy behavior demonstrates that she's smarter than you or she's more confident than you. And she doesn't want that. She wants a guy who's stronger than her, more emotionally stable and solid that she can rely on. If she can pull you all around with manipulation and she sees that you're needy, she can tell that other men can manipulate you. Other men can dominate you. And that doesn't make you attractive or safe. And so this is the biggest problem with most guys is that they have needy, approval-seeking behavior and it's a massive turnoff. And a lot of women are very tolerant of this. So much so that I'm very surprised that when a woman's texting a guy and I look at the text chain, I'm like, motherfucker. I'm surprised she's talked to you this long. Some women are not tolerant at all. After the first needy interaction or needy sentence, she's out. And the guy's like, I don't understand why she goes to me. He's, yeah, because you asked her how she's doing. He's like, what's wrong with asking her how she's doing? Because you pinged her to see if she still likes you. A better result would have been, hey, I hope you're doing fine. Just thinking about you, hope you're having a great day, right? It's one way. It's not seeking to get from her to reassure myself. And so this needy behavior can come through even in text messages, any kind of body language, any kind of language, your tone of voice. And so you can't really hide it. So the best thing to do is resolve it. Once a woman gets to know you, you're sitting across from her at the table and you're on that first date and then she sees that you're not really doing much with your life. And not only that, you're not excited about anything in the future. She sees this lack of ambition. She says, yeah, this guy ain't operating the, need, the way I need him to operate. He's not going to take me anywhere. He just wants to stay right here doing this thing because he doesn't value himself and he doesn't want more out of life. He's denying his own spiritual eternal expansion. And so when a woman sees this, she's like, there's something off about this and I don't like it. It's icky, it's gross, and this guy's denying himself and he's hiding from life. Your lack of ambition is quite literally you shitting all over the concept of God. God created you to eternally expand and grow and grow and grow in healthy ways. And the woman that you're with wants to grow with you. You both are in this game of eternal expansion where you are the ambitious one and she is the one who brings out the love, support, and shows you where you're fucking up in a healthy way when it's done right. And so this game here, this lack of ambition, just shows her also that you're not going to make money, you're not going to be ambitious enough to protect the family, you're not going to have a future that's greater for her, and you certainly aren't thinking about the legacy of children and what you're going to pass off to them with money, knowledge, and understanding of principles. And so your lack of ambition is massive. And you're like, well, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Good, make that your new mission. Make it your mission to figure out what the fuck you want to do. It doesn't matter, you're not married to it, just get moving, just take a step, just do something, and trust me, it's better than nothing. When you criticize, when you make judgments about people, just realize that you're judging yourself. So if you're very overly judgmental about somebody about their weight, this means that you would look in the mirror and you judge the hell out of yourself. And so when you do this, you make these judgments all the time, what you end up doing is you're creating these contracts with the woman in conversation that you don't even realize. So if you say, yeah, look at that woman over there who's overweight, what you're telling her is, you better not get overweight. And when you say, I can't stand people of this political whatever, you're telling her, you better not be like that because I don't like that. And so you create all these situations with her, all these judgments on her, and what she does is she starts to wither. She starts to see, yeah, I can't be with this guy. He's restricting the hell out of me. He's telling me all the things he doesn't like all the time, which means that he's closing up and op all the possibilities of how I can possibly operate. And you do this over and over and over again. And the more critical you are, you'll realize that even in your own life, you operate within a narrow window of judgment and criticism, and you're probably miserable. Because every judgment that you put out there, you're pointing it back at yourself. And you're putting it out onto all the other people around you. This is why when you go around and you just tell people what you don't like all the time, like, ugh, I don't like hanging out with this person. All I do is talk about all, all things they don't like. He's criticizing things. An open-hearted and clear person tends to welcome all. 
And this is how you want to operate. If you want to have a woman really blossom under your leadership, you have to create a garden where she can grow. And she only grows in this place where you can accept and love all of her, even the dark parts, even the fucked up parts. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have that in your life, but this is a, ideally what she wants from you. And you being overly critical not only makes you miserable, but it makes everybody else around you miserable, and it really screws up your dating options. Poor posture and body language shows the world how you think about yourself. If you're walking around like this, then it shows the world that you're afraid. You're like a dog with his tail between his legs. You're just waiting to get beat up again because you've been beat up a hundred times and you're surrounded by bullies. That's not a confident guy who has power and presence in his life. But when you're walking around with your shoulders back and your head up and you can walk around in a dominant fashion, and people are like, that guy is not afraid. That guy's built some shit. That guy knows how to defend himself. That guy has intrinsic power. And this is going to open you up. Women want to be in a safe place. And if you can't protect them emotionally and physically, then they're not going to want to be with you. They want to be with the guy who has the most of this. And so if you're walking around like you're a scared guy and you don't have the physical body in order to protect yourself, you don't have the skills and knowledge to be able to have the social acumen to move forward, and you don't know how to deal with people's emotions, she's going to see this in your body language and the way that you talk to people and the way that you move about your day. You can walk down the street, she'll know everything about you. So this one thing is one of those things that prevent men from even getting the opportunity to approach her because by the time she sees you walk up to her, your body language and posture is all fucked. And so she sees that guy. And the thing is, she's right. She doesn't want to be with that guy. She wants to be with the guy who works on himself and gets proud of himself and goes and does things and has ambition and has strength and has security. That's what she wants. And so if you want to have more of that in your life, then start working on your posture and body language and all the things that are rattling around your head that are making you actually walk around and be that way. Most men, when they're talking to a woman, they're talking to her and they're not even listening. They're trying to say, what's the cool thing I can say to get her to laugh? What's the next thing I could do that I can tell her that I really think this is cool or she's this way or whatever it is? And he's playing this covert game of manipulation when really all he should be doing is just sitting there and watching her and observing her and seeing who she really is, getting curious about who she is and deciding that he wants to know everything about her. But the thing is, is most guys don't want to know everything about her. Most guys want to get something from her. And so what they do is they play this hierarchical game of she's got something I want, so what can I do to elicit her to give me what I want, which namely most of the time is just sex and validation. And so he's not even playing this game of connection. And so he's lying to her. He's like, I, want to, I don't really want to connect with you. I just want to give you just enough so that you give me sex and validation. And she's like, something's off here. You feel creepy. And this is the problem. If he really wanted to start a relationship with her, if he really wanted her to have sex with him, he'd give her the currency that she wants, which is connection. Give her what she wants. Give her the actual connection. And then she'll give you what you actually want, which is the intimacy. And so you can't play this game. You have to give her what she wants so she'll give you what you want. And you have to do it from an honest place. Women are designed to intuit this shit out. And when you try to hide and lie, this ruins your entire game. So why not just get curious about her and actually figure out who she is? Get to know her, ask questions, actually listen and take seriously the shit that she says. When you do this, you find out that you probably have a lot more success in your dates. Most men try to seduce women through tactics, manipulation, game, and all kinds of other bullshit on the internet. They forget the game that of seduction is an enticement. It is an invitation. It is an invitation to play by connection. So if I connect with you on a deep level and I invite you to play the game I want to play, then you have the decision if you want to play or not. But if you're going to force the game, then you're going to manipulate. You're going to coerce. You're going to lie, cheat, and steal that is which isn't yours. Most of these guys going out there and information on the internet is going to tell you to do this with women. And they're going to call it different things, new gimmick, a new tactic. But really, the game if, of soul seduction is let us connect on an intimate level. Let me show you how cool I am. Let me entice you into this life that I've made, this seductive life. This life that I've created for myself, I've first seduced myself. And because I've seduced myself and have this amazing life that I absolutely fucking love and I work very hard to get it and I'm very proud of it and I can show it off with confidence and be proud and unapologetically express who I am, then when I have my eye on you, you may find it seductive. And that's cool. We'll go play that game. But if not, that's okay too. I don't need anything from you. I just want to play.
If you want to master your relationships with women and master the relationship with yourself, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit like on every video so it spreads the love to the other guys. If you're dealing with betrayal, cheating in your relationship and you want to move on as fast as possible or maybe even reignite the spark, check out Betrayed to Badass. This is the manual on how to go from, well, betrayed to absolute badass. If you're dealing with that and you wanna go fast or you want an actual program that over 3,500 guys have had massive fucking success in, check out Soul Seducer down in the description below. So if you've been doing these seven traits that tend to turn people off, especially women, and you wanna learn how to regain a woman's attraction, check out this video right here. <laughs>